The first place St. Louis Blues have been on a roll. They have a five-point lead in the Western Conference, and they're on a six-game winning streak, looking to make it seven straight as they head up north to take on the Winnipeg Jets. The Kansas City Chiefs are 11-4 and have already clinched a playoff spot. They're hosting the Los Angeles Chargers Sunday. The Chargers are far from the playoff picture, sent with a 5-10 and record. The Chiefs, however, plan on playing all their starters. The reason? Seating. Yep, it is homecoming today. As you can see, the parade is happening right behind us. I am here with Sonia Gray and Maurice, and why do you guys love homecoming? The first game in the Kansas Mizzou series is a neutral site game in 2020 at the Sprint Center in Kansas City, then followed by a 2021 matchup in Lawrence at Allen Field's house. And then finally, in 2022, the two teams will meet in Columbia to play here at the Mizzou Arena for the first time in 10 years. Being a student athlete comes with an intense schedule, but one Mizzou wrestler shows he can really do it all, and do it well. The NCAA says a former MU tutor, Yolanda Kumar, completed assignments, quizzes, and exams for 12 athletes. And as you can see behind me, there's a very unique tailgate truck. I'll be uh, talking to the owner later and getting his prediction and really trying to figure out what this is. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go, here we go. Back in December 2018, the University of Missouri announced the launching of their new esports team. When Mizzou was looking at initiatives that we could add that would attract the next generation of college students and get current students excited about something, esports kept coming up. The esports team consists of 21 scholarship students creating three teams that compete in either Rocket League, Overwatch, and League of Legends. Now the Mizzou esports team's new facility is in this dorm and in what used to be a computer workroom for students is now a state-of-the-art facility with 20 brand new computer systems, film room, and more. We had just gotten back from the summer. The building had just gotten finished and the computers were outside waiting to be unboxed and put in here. And everyone says that day felt like Christmas. Finally having an official space to play, it's not just their dorm rooms anymore. It's a place to practice and improve and grow. As the first SEC school and only the third Power 5 school to have a team, no one knew the challenges or how the inaugural year would unfold. It's, uh, it's extremely challenging to build a program up like this from the ground up. Uh, there's not a lot of schools uh, at the size or stature of Mizzou that have done this. So that is a challenge because there's not a lot of schools, not a lot of people we can ask for advice. Just trying to get everyone to understand each other as a player and uh, work together. A lot of these players haven't played on a team before. We've already had uh, and worked through issues with like staying motivated and like wanting to push forward and really making sure that, yeah, we want to stick with this, we want to go through. We've found it troublesome to find coaches and other teams to scrim against because we don't have so much respect. In their quest for respect, the esports team has flourished in their inaugural year. The Overwatch team was one of 12 teams in the country invited to a varsity invitational. The League of Legends team traveled across the Midwest competing against many schools, and the Rocket League team finished undefeated beating Aquinas in the NACE Rocket League Championship, completing a perfect season. It's very exciting because we, we weren't sure how we were going to play. Uh, we never played with each other before this, and we've been happy to actually be very competitive and have a lot of chemistry as a team. In a remarkable first season, these players came together to build a foundation that future Mizzou esports teams will stand on. I couldn't be more proud of the group that we have. I told them all when they first got here the very first day, uh, they were chosen not just because they're good at the games that they play, but I thought that they embodied what the University of Missouri was about and that they would be willing to put in the work to develop a program from the ground up. And the team hopes to continue building that foundation. I'm just looking forward to us consistently showing up, you know, top three, top four, top eight, whatever, and people going, oh, wow, Mizzou's, like, really doing some good stuff over there. Now with one semester under their belt, Mizzou Sports can continue to build, but now off a successful beginning. Garrett Tias, Camu at Sports, Columbia. Every game is major, but this, this moves up on the scale. In 1907, Kansas and Missouri played their first basketball game. With Missouri taking home the first ever win, it started something special. Something so special, the team's played another 266 games since. Sports Illustrated named it the oldest rivalry west of the Mississippi River. It's a good competition, but it's severe, and it brings out the best, I think, in everybody. When Missouri left the Big 12 for the SEC Conference in 2012, the rivalry ended, each team winning their last home game. But now the universities have agreed to renew the rivalry. 
The first game in the Kansas-Mizzou series is a neutral site game in 2020 at the Sprint Center in Kansas City, then followed by a 2021 matchup in Lawrence at Allen Fieldhouse. And then finally, in 2022, the two teams will meet in Columbia to play here at the Mizzou Arena for the first time in 10 years. When the teams meet on December 12th to play, 3,213 days will have passed since the last regular season game between the two. What we experienced a couple of years ago at the Sprint Center with the uh, exhibition game was nice. It was a comfortable little affair, but there wasn't the, um, there wasn't the uh, uh, complete passion that you've seen uh, in previous games between Missouri and Kansas. The rivalry has seen its passions in a couple different ways. A 1961 bench clearing brawl in Brewer Fieldhouse, or a 1987 when Derek Chivas was elbowed, then led the Tigers to a Big 8 tournament championship thanks to a game winning shot by Lee Coward. At the end of the day, the essence of college sports is kids making plays, and, and that's what I remember is just kids making plays to either um, you know, decide the outcome of the game or, or come just a little close. With neither team having players with experience in an MUKU regular season game, they get the chance to learn firsthand how intense these games can be. Well, I think the current players need to realize how severe the competition is and to be prepared for that, to do everything you can to get your team ready to uh, say, hey, this is, this is going to be, this is major. Every game is major. But this, this moves up on the scale. My hope is, is that as it resumes, and I think it's helpful that it's going to resume on a neutral court, that it's respectful. Even though the rivalry has been called a war, it's more than just games. It's continuing a legacy. I was a good friend of Dr. Allen, Fog Allen, and so I have a special, uh, really special feeling about the University of Kansas and the University of Missouri and the competition between the two. We aren't sure if the teams will pick up where they left off in 2012 or even if they'll continue playing after the six-year agreement is up. But what we do know is the oldest rivalry west of the Mississippi is back. Garrett Tias, KMUH Sports, Columbia.